Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and I use a lot of portable solid state drives here on the channel for all of our video editing. Uh, we often sneaker net, as they call it, data around the office here when we're working on different projects, so we can never have enough of these. And we just got in a new one the other day from SanDisk. This is their Extreme Portable SSD, and it is a portable solid state drive. They have capacities ranging from 250 gigabytes to 2 terabytes. And in this review, we're going to be taking a look at the one terabyte drive. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from SanDisk. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this drive is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Not very big, pretty slim here as you can see. Uh, it's got a rubberized coating around it, at least on the sides and back, that uh, help uh, maybe give it a little bit of a cushion if it falls. This part here is plastic. Uh, you've got a portion here for a carabiner so you can put it on your backpack or something as you're walking around. Feels pretty solidly constructed here. It is IPS55 rated. Uh, which means that you really shouldn't submerge it in water, but it is uh, splash proof and dust proof. So if you do have it on your backpack while you're going camping or something and you get a little bit of water on it, it's not going to uh, damage it too much. Although I would make sure the connector here is clear of any moisture before you plug something in. And I certainly don't recommend uh, submerging it in water. I don't know why you would, but just don't do it. Uh, the only connector it's got here is the USB Type-C connector. This supports the USB 3.1 Gen 2 standard, which the uh, theoretical maximum speeds come in around 10 uh, gigabits per second. The drive itself won't get to that point, but it will run faster than a traditional Gen 1 device would. Uh, it also comes with a cable, of course, for connecting it to your computer, but it is very, very short. Look how short that cable is. Now, if you don't have a USB-C connector on your computer, they give you an adapter in the box to convert the USB-C to USB-A, but notice the arrows here. You need to make sure these arrows line up. It won't let you attach the connector here if those arrows do not, but not every cable is keyed like this, so you definitely want to be careful with this adapter on other devices because I'm not sure this is an in-spec design. We saw this on a WD drive a little while ago too. Uh, so I would have preferred them to pack in two cables just to prevent any potential damage from using this connector inappropriately with other devices. But my advice would be use it only with this drive and make sure the arrows are lined up on the cable when you plug it in. So let's take a look now and see how the drive performs. I have it hooked up to my MacBook Pro here and we're running the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. This is a test that looks at how well a drive can record video uh, for streaming applications and that sort of thing. Uh, so you can see here we're getting write speeds at around 465 megabytes per second and it's reading at about 518 megabytes per second. Uh, what's nice here is that the write speeds appear to be consistent. A lot of times with uh, some lower end solid state drives we'll see a very fast result when it first starts writing and then it will kind of slow down as the cache fills up. Uh, this one seems to be working very consistently on the write speed which is good and we're seeing similar performance here on the reads. Uh, but we also ran the uh, Crystal Disk Mark test on Windows to get a sense as to how it does with random reads and writes. And you can see the results up on screen now. Uh, so we did get a little better on the sequential reads and writes with that test. Different tests have different methodologies, but the uh, last three results here are all the random read and write tests. Overall, the random reads and writes on here, I think, are very good for an external solid state drive. I think you probably would have a pretty good experience booting a operating system off of this if you wanted to. Now this drive's main competitor is the Samsung T5. Uh, this drive came out about a year ago and performs pretty much the same as this one does on most of our tests with the exception of the 250 gigabyte Samsung drive uh, which did not perform all that great in consistent write speeds. But the 500 gig and up on the Samsung, uh, really in my testing, pretty much line up almost, not exactly, but pretty darn close to uh, what we're seeing here on the SanDisk. So a few megabytes per second difference here or there, but nothing significant that I saw. Uh, both drives also come with a three-year warranty. So really, I think it comes down to uh, brand preference and perhaps the uh, design of the casing. The Samsung drive here certainly can't be clipped to anything, uh, whereas you can clip the SanDisk to your backpack or whatever and have perhaps a more secure way to keep it with you while you're walking around. 
but overall, not a big difference between the two. Let's wrap things up with a real-world test, uh, running some 4K multi-camera editing here on my MacBook. So here is Final Cut Pro running with a multi-camera 4K video project, and Typically on a spinning hard drive, this will not play very well at all because it can't push enough data through. Uh, what I'm seeing here with this drive is that it is able to keep up just fine with these uh, two 4K streams going simultaneously. And this is for me one of the big tests that I like to run on these drives to make sure that they're going to work uh, in our environment here because many times you're going out in the field and shooting multi-camera 4K and it's really fun and easy to uh, edit these projects in 4K. Uh, with these multi-camera angles here playing back simultaneously. And as you can see here, uh, we're not having any problems doing just that. So overall, this is a solid, solid state drive from SanDisk. It performs well, nice and portable, pretty rugged. And if you're looking for an external drive with some performance behind it, you can't go wrong with one of these portable SSDs. And this is a good one. Uh, SanDisk, of course, has been making flash memory for a very long period of time. I've had nothing but good experiences with these drives in the past, and that includes uh, their customer service department as well. So I have no problem recommending this one if you are in the market for something like this. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Bill Reiner, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.